Hi, I'm Rick at Rick Turns, and today's video is... Hmm, uh, looks like I forgot to open the shades this morning. Let me see if I can get that. Ah, there we go. All right, for today's project, I've got another piece of mulberry here. This is, um, as you can see, it's the outside cutoff of a mulberry log. And you can see right here, it's fairly thick. I think I've got enough wood here for a shallow bowl. Now we've got a little bit of a uh, chainsaw cut here. I'm gonna lose a little bit of wood, maybe a half an inch there, but that's not too bad. Um, and uh, I've got about 11 inches from edge of the sapwood to here. Uh, so I can probably get um, most likely about a, a 10 inch shallow bowl out of it. That's what I'm gonna do. So let's, uh, let's get started on this. Uh, I'm gonna lower the shades again. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah. Let's see, here's a 12 inch template. So I'm going to start by marking it here with this. Actually, I'm not. Yeah, I am. No, I'm not. <laughs> Got to put it on here because this side is flat and I can put it down on the bandsaw. Gonna be using my one-way strong hole chuck initially with a woodworm screw. ready to rough down the outside of what will be a bowl here.
bottom's pretty flat. Okay. <coughs> That's good. Get this off of the chuck. Got the chuck locked on the spindle. So there we go. And you can see from that chainsaw cut here, the <laughs> bone top's got to come down some. And so for the next step, I'm going to be using the record SC4 chuck with 120 millimeter jaws. Now, before I go any further, I want to do a depth check here. Okay, I've got my little depth check jig here. Let me say if you want to make one of these little jigs, and they're very easy to make, and they're also very accurate as long as you pay attention to them, which I usually don't. Uh, you can find this on Sam Angelo's channel, that's the Wyoming Wood Turner. And I'll try to remember to put a link in the show notes below the video. Okay, so if you take a look right down here, I've got about a half an inch there. And yeah, that's right on a half an inch. That half an inch represents the distance from here to the point where I would cut through the bottom. <laughs> so uh, I usually cut through the bottom in spite of the jig. Anyway, the tip of this rod is aligned with this. The edge of this uh, is aligned with the outermost point on the jaws. So put that right there, and that gap there represents the amount of wood to the very bottom of the bowl. And since I've got about a half an inch, I'm not going to screw with it. I'm going to leave it alone. I have, a <laughs> I have a bad habit of cutting through the bottom of the bowl. Now you can see right now I've got a pretty shallow 
uh, movement here that, or, or shape here that does not match the shape here. And I kind of like that. I was going to make it match the outside shape, but I want to do some work on the inside. So I'm going to leave it like this. I'm going to turn maybe a little bit more right here, and that's going to be it. may not be evident in the video footage, the bowl is already warped just a little bit. This is really green wood. Um, this tree was taken down two to three months ago and it's been in the log ever since, so it hasn't dried out much. So I am going to put this in the drying box. Okay, here's my high-tech, super expensive drying box. You can see it's made out of a uh, high quality, high grade cardboard box from Home Depot. Got a little computer fan right here. These fans run on five to seven volts. And the computer fan is gonna put a little air into it. The light bulb here is gonna put a little heat into it. As soon as I plug the cord in, you see the fan starts up. Didn't bother to put a switch on this thing. And then I put the light cowling right here. Tighten it around there. Now that's only about a 60 watt bulb. And that's intentional. You get too much heat going in there, it's gonna dry that thing out and it's gonna split. And that is not very good. Bet you can guess the next step. Got to get that bowl in there. Just set it in there. Let the air blow on it for a few days. Now for the pattern I'm going to use. It's the middle of winter up here in Rockville, Maryland. So naturally, I'm going to use some ripe blueberries. It fits the season. And they're going to go right into the center. Now, I got this image from, uh, it was canstockphoto.com. Seven bucks. And so I'm going to position that first, and then I'll slip the uh, transfer paper underneath it. I'm going to trace out the berries and the leaves. Except for that one right there. I don't really like that one. If you think this is going to take a while, you're right. I'll be back in a little while. All right, the pattern is traced down there, and it's looking pretty good. So the next step is wood burning. And here we go. And yes, this is going to take even more time than tracing the pattern did. The wood burning is done. <clears throat> it actually went fairly fast. I did a little bit of sanding and I did a lot of erasing to get rid of some of the blue lines. Now, here is the pattern. As you can see, we've got dark blue and light blue. And I'm going to try and do that a little bit. I'm not much of an artist. So... <laughs> Let's see what we're going to get here. All right, I'm going to start with a light blue here. Thank you. 
and the dyeing is all done. It's a water-based dye. I'm going to let this sit overnight before I do anything else to it. It's the next day. Uh, the dye is set. I wiped it off very carefully, but apparently not carefully enough because I got a little bit of a smudge of blue around here and uh, don't think I'm going to be able to get that off. Okay, I'm going to be using uh, Minwax Wipe On Poly today. This is a water-based uh, varnish. Um, <clears throat> and the good thing about being water-based is I can put multiple coats on uh, in a matter of hours. So let it set uh, for an hour or so, put another coat on another coat. And I'm just going to dab it on the, uh, the dye part very carefully because I don't want that dye to run anymore, and it is. Oh boy. Okay. This isn't turning out all that great. <laughs> oh crap. Okay, now I'm going to do everything except the dyed area. Now, this part can't really go wrong, I hope. I hereby decree this bowl is done. Yes, finished, over, dead. Uh, I should have stopped before I put on the wood burning, or before I put on the dye, really. The wood burning worked out okay. Uh, the dye, though, when I put on the finish, the dye smeared, and I couldn't get rid of that. So, <laughs> so overall, it's uh, a disappointment. <laughs> See you next video.